first I'm going to be going over the classical secretary problem to provide some intuition for how the secretary problem works in general. After that, I'll be going over some applications of the secretary problem. And then I'll be going over two cases of the sliding window secretary problem that I studied during my time at RSI. Finally, I'll have some concluding remarks on future directions for the sliding window secretary problem. So in the classical secretary problem, you have a known number and applicants applying for a job, as you can see here. And you're trying to choose the best applicant. However, all these applicants are coming to you in a random order, and you have the added constraint that you see each applicant one at a time. Once you interview an applicant, you have to immediately make the decision whether to accept or reject that applicant. And once you reject an applicant, you can't go back to the applicant. As you can see here, you can only make your decision based on the relative ranks of applicants that have appeared before. Your goal is to find the last applicant, or the best applicant over here, but it, uh, but if you skip the first n minus 1 applicants, you're stuck with the last applicant. And we're trying to find the optimal strategy that maximizes the probability of choosing the best applicant. And we can divide the optimal strategy into two parts, the optimal form of the strategy and the probability of winning that results from this optimal form. So to provide some intuition for the optimal form of the strategy, I'm going to introduce the notion of a candidate. A candidate is an applicant that provides the interviewer with a non-zero probability of winning. For example, this applicant is a candidate because this applicant provides the interviewer with a 1 in n chance of winning. However, the next applicant is not a candidate because you know that the previous applicant is better than the second applicant, and therefore, this applicant can't possibly be the best overall. Similarly, all of these applicants are not candidates, but the sixth applicant over here is a candidate. And now that I've introduced the idea of a candidate, I can go into the optimal strategy for the, sliding windows, for the classical secretary problem. The optimal form of the strategy is to skip a threshold number of applicants, as proven by Gilbert and Mosteller in 1966, and then to choose the next best applicant, or to choose the next candidate. And it turns out that the optimal threshold number of applicants for a large number of applicants is n over e, and the maximum probability of winning is 1 over e, or about 37%. So this is how the threshold rule works. Suppose your threshold is at the fourth applicant. You skip the first four applicants, you skip also the fifth applicant because he's worse than the first four applicants, and you end up choosing the sixth applicant, who happens to be the best applicant overall. You would lose if the best applicant overall is before the threshold, or if you switch, in this case, with the second best applicant. So this isn't a foolproof way of winning, but this maximizes the probability of winning. There are many applications of the secretary problem because it's such a natural problem to consider. For example, you can use some variant of the secretary problem to decide whether to hold on to a stock or sell a stock. In addition, you can use a secretary problem to describe human behavior if you add some sort of cost function that, for example, if you are trying to find the best gas station, you'd rather choose the best gas station earlier than later. In addition, you can use the secretary problem to model online algorithms for analyzing sequential data or algorithms where you're trying to analyze data points one at a time. And finally, you can use the secretary problem to analyze decision theory for both consumers and employers, which is what the problem was made for initially. However, the restraint of the classical secretary problem that the interviewer has to make the decision right after interviewing the applicant is not realistic. So we want to give the interviewer more time to make a decision. So we're going to give the interviewer the ability to choose from any of the last k applicants, and therefore give the interviewer a sliding window of size k. The reason why the sliding window secretary problem is so different from the classical secretary problem is because of the sliding rule. The interviewer wants to keep interviewing applicants so that the applicant he ends up choosing is he's very confident that that's the best applicant overall. But he does not want to sacrifice the probability of winning. Therefore, he's going to skip as many applicants as he can that he's sure won't give him a win. For example, he's going to end up skipping the first three applicants over here because the first three applicants are guaranteed not to be the best applicant overall. Now he sees the seventh applicant being better than the fourth applicant, so he's going to skip the next three applicants, and he's, end up, he's going to end up choosing the seventh applicant, the best applicant overall. So with the sliding rule, we can now find the optimal strategy for the best one case of the sliding window secretary problem, where you win if you choose the best applicant and you lose otherwise. And it turns out that the optimal form is very similar to the optimal form for the classical secretary problem. You skip a threshold number of applicants, and then you choose the next best applicant with the sliding rule, or the next candidate. And now, since we have the sliding rule, we have to take a recursive approach to how we solve the sliding window problem, and how we to find the maximum probability of winning. Suppose we have this red line as our arbitrary threshold, and we divide the remaining applicants into blocks of size k, where k is our window size. We win if the best applicant is in this region, because if the, well, we win only if the best applicant is in this region, because if the best applicant is before the threshold, we're guaranteed to skip that applicant and therefore lose. Additionally, 
if the best applicant is over here, we lose if we stop in this red region. Because once we get past the red region, we're guaranteed to have our app best applicant in the window, and therefore choose that applicant. Similarly, if you want to find the probability of stopping here, you subtract off the probability of stopping in this darker red region. And with this recursive relation, we can come up with a formula that gives us a probability of winning in a certain uh, range of indices, given an arbitrary threshold and arbitrary window size. And now we want to find the threshold that maximizes the probability of winning for different window sizes. So what we do is that we're going to convert this sum right here into an integral by approximating this solution for a large number of applicants. And once we do that, we get this black curve that describes the optimal thresholds for different window sizes analytically. And as we see here, the thresholds for 10 applicants is pretty far away from the black curve. But as you increase the number of applicants, the optimal thresholds obtained by exhaustion approach the optimal thresholds obtained by the analytical solution. And similarly, we can compute the probability of winning for the secretary problem, sliding window secretary problem, by plugging in the optimal thresholds. And we find out that the probability of winning goes like this. And thus, we've completely characterized the best one case of the sliding window secretary problem because we found the optimal form of the strategy and the maximum probability of winning for different window sizes. Now we're going to move on to the best two case of the sliding window secretary problem, where you win if you choose one of the top two applicants. That means there are two different types of candidates. There are one candidate, or the best applicant out of all the applicants you've seen so far, and there are also two candidates, or the second best applicant out of all the applicants you've seen so far. And because there are two different types of candidates, there's two different thresholds. And you reject all the applicants before the first threshold, you accept the first one candidate after the first threshold that you see, and after the second threshold, you consider the first one candidate or two candidate. You can see how this threshold works as follows. Suppose you have a sliding window of size 3 and these two thresholds. You're going to skip the first two applicants over here because they're before the threshold. You're going to skip the next two applicants over here because they're not one candidates. They're not the best out of all the applicants you've seen. And finally, you're going to consider two candidates, and you're going to end up choosing this applicant, who happens to be the second best applicant overall. So to summarize, you consider one candidate in this region, and you consider one and two candidates in this region. So now that we have the optimal form of the strategy, as we did for the best one case, we can compute the optimal thresholds as we did for the best one case. This time, there are going to be two thresholds. And as we can see here, there's, you can find a similar asymptotic solution for a large number of applicants. And we can also find the probability of winning from these optimal thresholds. And as we'd expect, the probability of winning for the best two case is larger than the probability of winning for the best one case, because the interviewer has fewer ways to win with the best one case than the interviewer does with the best two case. So future directions for the sliding window secretary problem to make it more applicable to daily life would be to consider a top L problem, where the interviewer wins if he chooses one of the top L applicants. And this is very easily extendable from the top two case. We just add L thresholds instead of two thresholds. We can also consider the case where, there is, where the interviewer can choose more than one applicant when he's trying to find the best applicant overall. And uh, that is also an extension where you add an additional sum for the second choice or the third choice and so on. A fundamentally different uh, app extension would be the full information model, where the interviewer knows much more than just the relative ranks of the applicants, but also the cardinal scores of the applicants and the complete distributions of scores from which those cardinal scores come. And another fundamentally different uh, extension would be the best expected rank problem, where the interviewer is trying to minimize the expected rank of the applicant he chooses rather than maximize the probability of choosing the best applicant. And finally, we can incorporate some sort of cost function for delaying a choice as uh, people do to model human behavior. So I'd like to thank my mentor, Professor Sean Wan Ho, for helping me with my mathematical research and teaching me how to write very elegant proofs. I'd also like to thank Dr. Tanya Kovanova for suggesting this variant of the secretary problem. I'd like to thank my tutor and all of the other people who helped me edit and out of my paper. I'd like to thank Professor Jerison, Professor Moitra, and the MIT Mathematics Department for providing important suggestions, Assistant Director Alec Lai for support during RSI, all of my sponsors, the Department of Defense, Mr. Yokelson of Building Engineering and Science Talent, and the Vatsa family for sponsoring me and making this possible, and finally, RSI, CE, and MIT for making my research possible here. Thank you. Oh, here? Yeah. Can you actually get close 
So uh, first of all, he was asking whether we can find closed forms for these probability of winnings. And the tricky part about this is because this is a recursion, you can, it's hard to simplify into a very elegant solution. So what I did is I chose specific examples of window sizes that I consider to be important. Well, I, what I did is I looked at window sizes in this range right here, and I found the probability of winning for those ranges. And the solution for the best one case and the best two case is very well known for a window size of one, or approximately a normalized window size of zero. So what I did is I did a spline interpolation of all those points, and that gave me basically what the window sizes would be for, I mean, the probability of winning for B for different window sizes. I had to do a similar thing over here, and you could see how, uh, how, predictable, how well it could predict different thresholds based on the actual raw data that we got for exhausting exhaustion and trying to find the optimal thresholds that way. Yeah. I'm a little bit confused. I thought that you got asymptotic, analytical asymptotic expansion, but something was large, either uh, the size of the windows or number of applicants. Uh, total number of applicants. I thought you had an analytical solution. So now I have two questions instead of one. Okay. First, is it right that you have an analytical solution in uh, that region, uh, in that uh, region? And second, if you do, what should be large, number of applicants or size of the window? So for, uh, he was first asking about whether I have an analytical solution for the probability of winning. Uh, asymptotic uh, uh, analytical solution. Uh, I do not have an asymptotic analytical solution because it's very hard to convert this uh, summation uh, into, uh, uh, into a very nice form analytically for a large number of applicants. But what I did is that I s r replaced these sums with integrals. And once, when I could do that, I could find the analytical optimal thresholds for different window sizes. So while I, didn't have, I don't have an analytical closed form for the solution for different window sizes, I, have, I obtained the probability of winning for different window sizes and the optimal thresholds analytically. Uh, so I have an analytical solution for the values of D, or the threshold for passing, that maximizes this probability of winning. I do not, however, have an analytical solution for the actual maximum probability of winnings for different window sizes. What I did is I computed the actual probability of winning for different points, and I interpolated those points with a spline curve. But you have the analytical solution for the strategy, which is your D. Yeah, I have the analytical solution for the strategy and I have a way to find the analytical solution for any window size by replacing these sums with integrals. Now, to replace that sum uh, by integrals, uh, do you have to have a large number of applicants, or you also have to have large windows? So his second question was whether I need to have a large number of applicants and a large window size. So uh, these sums, what I do to, find, uh, to replace these sums with integrals is I divide by the number of applicants on the top and bottom, so it becomes more and more accurate as I have larger in number of applicants. And, but a consequence of that is because I'm using the normalized window size, as the number of applicants increases, what I'm predicting for the optimal thresholds implies that the window size increases. But the, fi the ratio of the window size and the number of applicants is fixed. Uh, so you have to have both. Uh, you, you, you have to have both numbers to be large to get the uh, uh, it, actually it actually turns out in the worst case scenario is you're approximating, say you have one point, you're approximating a function like this with, I mean you're approximating a sum like with this one term with a function like this. I understand that, yeah. that's not a criticism. Oh, no, no, no. So it doesn't matter what the window size is because as long as, I, because the window size uh, just happens to grow, the, the solution to the problem happens to grow as the ratio of the window size and the number of applicants is fixed. But the solution is exactly as accurate with the window size of 1 as it is for a window size of 50. Okay. Any further questions? Yes. Uh, so I saw that you said you were considering the top L problem as well uh, regarding the case where you're looking at L, the best of L candidate. Um, you said that you were going to 
Well, I have some intuition for the problem. So s similarly to how there are uh, two candidates for the top two case, we're, uh, we can see that in a natural extension of that, there's going to be L types of candidates for the top L case. And because there are L types of candidates for the top L case, we're going to get L different thresholds. And that, that will give us uh, an optimal form of the strategy very similar. And once we have a very similar optimal form of the strategy, we can easily apply the recursions that we did for the best one case and the best two case just, just the same way and find the optimal thresholds and the optimal probability of winning. In terms of next step, I'm going to extension of your findings. Uh, do you think that the uh, extension that to some type of correlated distributions would be feasible? So that uh, you're talking about like instead of just knowing the relative ranks of applicants you've seen before, also knowing like their actual scores. What I'm trying to say is that for applicants, they are pretty much random and independent. Yeah. For stock market, they are pretty much not random and independent. But they being cool stock prices yeah. are not that much random and independent. They are correlated. So what I'm trying to say in terms of the quality of your candidates. If you introduce correlations between them, if you now if your number of correlations is the uh, analogous to the time when you buy the uh, stock, and your quality of candidate is analogous to the price of the stock, then obviously you would see that uh, there is some correlation between the candidate number m and candidate number m plus one. Is there any way to extend your results for correlation distribution? Uh, well, I haven't thought about that exactly before, but the idea I had to, uh, came up, I just came up on the top t this right now for extending this version of the secretary problem to like uh, actual real life situations where the next applicant or I guess the next data point in stock markets you see is correlated with the previous data point is that if you go back to this this sum right here, what this sum actually does is it calculates the probability of winning at individual indices. So what you can do is you can add an additional term in that sum to, to some, so for some sort of correlation to the previous index. And when you, once you do that, then the recursion is going to become even more difficult to solve like, analytically. We can still approximate the solution as you would, uh, as I did here, or by, looking, by exhaustively finding the optimal thresholds. All right. Thanks very much, Abby.